Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is T Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that it's a digital astro space. Good morning, happy Tuesday to each and every one of you. Wow, the market is doing what the market does. We go over the new all time high for the total cryptocurrency market cap. Ripple swell is taking place. I'm hoping to get some interesting footage from somewhere about what's going on there. I know Brad had the opening remarks. I'm sure we'll get some stuff on Twitter or maybe on the official Ripple channel. Interesting, interesting stuff coming out from Joseph Gubins. We found some interesting videos on Twitter and Ripple's liquidity hub. They make the official announcement <laughs> after Leonidas of XRP Arcade found some interesting stuff. They did make the official announcement, it looks like, sometime uh, either really, really late last night or early this morning. So we will get into that as well. Brian Brooks is doing his thing. We'll share some interesting stuff from here with him as well. Perhaps we will do that as well, or we'll save it for another video. But uh, listen, guys, this is your XRP Ripple daily news. And around zero to 10 minutes, let's check it, look, take a look at the market. 3.09 trillion as a few minutes ago. Let me refresh it for the current. So now it's down to 3.8 trillion. So it was th at 3.9 trillion for a second or so, up 2.9% on a 24-hour. Bitcoin is yeah, it was 68,000 this morning when I hopped on here. Now it's 67,967. Actually up double figures on the seventh day at 11.2%. Ethereum is $4,829, up 11.5% on a seven day. Binance coin, $648, up 17.5% on a seven day. Cardano's at $2.37, up 21.5% on a seven day. Solana's $245. Can you imagine 200 xing your money? 200X. So excited for those people who are involved in the Solana ecosystem. Wow, we, 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 we're working on that new 1%. I'm excited for you guys. 20.5% on the seven day for Solana. XRP is at $1.25, is up 14.1% on the seven day. Polkadot is $52. Uh, Dogecoin is 27 cents. Shiba Unu is 0 0.00005602. Terra Luna is at $52. It's up 19% on the seven day. Avalanche is at $89, up 38% on the seven day. Litecoin is $261, it's up 31% on the seven day. Chainlink is at $34. Uniswap is $26. Uh, yep, $26 there. Bitcoin Cash is actually up double figures on a seven day. However, it still has a ways to go before its previous all time high, $692 currently. Polygon's at $1.85, Algorand's at $1.98. V Chain, look at V Chain. Wow, wow, look at V Chain go. Shout out to all the V Chain holders. Wow, I'm happy for you guys because I know you got we got a lot of V Chain holders at the XRP community. It's, a, it's at 18 cents, it's up 31% on the seventh day. Another, another uh, uh, shot of uh, creating a new 1% from VeChain holders. I love it. Cosmos or the Atom tokens at $36. Axis Affinity's at $153. Stella Lumens at 39 and a half cents. Yeah, we got in just in time, nearly 7.8%. We added to our position just in time. We've been in Stella for a bit. So that is cool to see as well. So guys, listen, the market is doing what the market does. Look, look you know, um, Chair Gensler has been very, very quick to point out whether he's, whether he's in speeches, you know, whether, you know, he's at MIT doing speeches where, where he's in his current position as the chair of the current SEC. This is what he points out to all of us, right? Because, because you know, obviously, you know, what is a security and what is not a security is clear, right? It's perfectly clear. An investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit from the efforts of others, from the efforts of others. So found this tweet this morning. This is very, very interesting. This is from at Nerd Nation Unbox. 
at Nerd Nation Unboxed. He came up with some really, he or she came up with some really great, great, great uh, video. This is Joseph Lubin at apparently speaking at Rice University or Jones Graduate School of Business, right? So take a listen to what Joseph Lubin says in his own words about what he did and what they did for the Ethereum project in 2014, how it all got started. Take a listen to this. Uh, we raised funds. Uh, the project started in January 2014. Uh, we raised funds uh, in a crowd sale and uh, earned $18 million in that event, applied that money to the development of the system, and uh, July 30, 2015, uh, Ethereum version 1 client uh, was released. Raise money. Hey, baby. Raised money for the project. He said it straight out of his mouth. Take a listen to this. Expectation of profits from the efforts of others. Take a listen to this one. An interesting side effect is that uh, you have lots of software developers and business developers who hold this value token and who are incentivized to increase the value of the ecosystem. So it's been a driver uh, for uh, many different projects in the public blockchain space, public Ethereum space. Not the greatest of looks there. Not the greatest of looks. Here's another one too. Um, uh, does this go under all the world's a stage file? Grunfest who work with Stefan to give Ethereum their pass here with Brad. Interesting. Many of the ICOs. 17, there was about 3 billion. A minute ago, you were talking about an improbable initial coin offering called the Munchies. And uh, seemed absurd. And then Joe, as his want, tried to out you, outdo you with an even more absurd offering. How many of these have been sold? Who's buying them? So uh, in calendar year 2017, there was about $3 billion raised through ICOs. Uh, it, I would have guessed that that would slow down in 2018 as regulators like the SEC interjected and more proactively called out frauds and scams. And, you know, from my opinion, what these actually are. And in many cases, in fact, I think they are securities and should be regulated that way. This year, in 2018, year to date, you've already had $10 billion raised through ICOs. So it's actually increased a lot. And I, I don't see it slowing down any real, anytime real soon, in part because I think we haven't seen as many regulators get as aggressive as I, I think they probably should in regulating what is a little bit of a chaotic market. And so the, the guy off to the left uh, or to the right of Brad, that's Joseph Grunfest. Joseph Grunfest, former SEC commissioner, who told flat out, Flat out told Jay Clayton, do not, do not bring this lawsuit against Ripple. It will damage the SEC's reputation. Told him flat out, do not bring this lawsuit against Ripple. This is a company who did not file an ICO. They did not have an ICO. Ripple did not do an ICO. Listen to what Joseph Grunfest has to say. What happened here? Probable in and I, I don't see it slowing down. Any regulators get as aggressive as I, I think they probably should in regulating what is a little bit of a chaotic market. Yeah, I'm with Brad entirely. Uh, I was quoted in the New York Times a while ago as saying these ICOs are the most open and notorious violation of the federal securities laws since the Code of Hammurabi. <laughs> these ICOs said ICOs. But yet somehow Gary Gensler won't comment on whether Ethereum is a security or not. Uh, it's, it, it's at to a point where, it, you know, his reputation is going to be question and question and question and question. And now what is he going to try to come up with in reference to Ethereum? Is he going to say, well, it transitioned to some other thing? It transitioned to some other thing? Well, what about when they initially launched? Right. He spoke to the fact that the SEC, Joseph Grunsfest, he, he, he said he just can't believe how they just haven't, this is in 2018, haven't been going after any of these um, ICOs and only brought seven enforcement actions. 
in totality at that time. Yet they decide to come after Ripple, who never had an ICO. Isn't that interesting? Let's take the Brit and listen to the rest of this. Uh, and why the SEC hasn't been more active? They've only brought seven actions to this point. Uh, is a mystery that I can't explain. Well, one of the <laughs> is a mystery that I can't explain. A minute ago, you were talking about an improper. So I don't know how this current chair, uh, uh, Gensler, and this current SEC, what, how they're going to respond to this whole Ethereum thing. Because the, it's being brought out, it's being brought out, it's being brought out. You can see uh, that this guy, Wheezy, here um, tagged these people here. I put the tweet. Um, I retweeted this um, as well. And I just said, did he say what they, did he just say what I thought he said? <laughs> He said, I ra we raised funds for a project that was not built out yet so that we could build a project. This is the number one thing that Gary Gensler talks about as being a security. It's right there in his own words, just like it says here. If you ever needed it in plain language, listen to it in his own words. I don't know how the current SEC is going to get away with this. How are they going to, what they're going to have, they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to do something because it's very obvious what happened here. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is very, very, very obvious what happened here. Let me see. Very, very obvious. And you can see, um, did he just say what I thought he said? And I talked, I tagged Charles and Eleanor from Fox Business video, from Fox Business. I highly encourage you guys to, to do that when you find some information. And then I, I tagged my local Congress people here um, as well. So if you see this tweet, certainly retweet it out. But I think it's important to not let the foot, you know, let the gas off the pedal here. Don't let the foot off your pedal here because this is hugely, hugely important. Yeah, they have some explaining to do with the current SEC, Gary Gensler mainly. <clears throat> and we want to hold them to fire. We want to make sure that they understand that we're not letting this go. We are not letting this go. But you, but you decided to create this unlevel playing field. We didn't do it. You did it. This is not about a particular person at Ethereum. This is about the SEC, just picking winners and, and losers. Bill Hemman, Jay Clayton decided that they're going to pick something over another thing. That's what they did. They didn't let the market decide who, who is the better, better project. They didn't let the market decide where they had a need and then apply the use case that that project has to address that need. They didn't let that happen. The SEC decided for the market. So let's get into some more exciting and more positive news after this madness here from the SEC. So here it is, guys. Ripple actually puts it out on their website today. Liquidity Hub for Enterprise, Ripple Liquidity Hub for Enterprises at ripple.com forward slash insight. The world is fast moving towards a crypto first future, one in which every company will have a strategy for how to leverage crypto, tokenized assets, smart contracts, and more to transfer value and fuel a rising tide of global digital transactions and commerce. Liquidity, the ability, the ability to instantly, seamlessly, and affordably exchange assets is the key to turning this vision for a bold new future into reality. While there are many exchanges supporting liquidity through the consumer trading of digital assets, a true crypto first world will remain elusive without enterprise participation indeed just as ubiqu ubiquity for electric vehicles is impossible is impossible absent large automakers like ford and volvo interesting <laughs> ford and volvo <laughs> no tesla mention mainstream crypto requires engagement and financial institutions to enable this today we revealed plans for ripple liquidity hub a groundbreaking new way for enterprises to easily and efficiently source digital assets from 
the broader crypto market. As a crypto liquidity platform built for the enterprise, it will unleash the potential to access deep liquidity within markets, accelerating the shift to crypto. Wow, designed as a turnkey solution for financial institutions, Ripple Liquidity Hub will leverage smart order routing to source digital assets at optimized prices from market makers, exchanges, and OTC desks. Enterprises will use Ripple Liquidity. Enterprises will use Ripple Liquidity Hub to easily and seamlessly provide their end customers with the ability to buy, sell, and hold digital assets at the best possible prices across a range of venues. Wow. Ripple Liquidity Hub will, will uniquely solve for the specific pain points of enterprise customers, avoiding long and resource heavy integrations through a streamlined API. And unlike most offerings, eliminating pre-funding requirements in order to free up working capital. And while the XRP ledger and XRP are and will remain a native part of our tech stack, we at Ripple believe that achieving interoperability is key to unlocking crypto's true potential. The ability to interoperate crypto across networks will break down barriers to entry and enable greater competition and inclusion. Because of this, Ripple liquidity, liquidity, liquidity Hub will initially support Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin Cash, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin Cash, and XRP. <laughs> what? What? I, I am, I, 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 wow. I'm proud to say that I own each and every single one of them except for Litecoin. Holy moly. It says availability will vary by geography, obviously. So with plans to add, because of that XRP lawsuit, with plans to add additional digital assets over time. In the future, Ripple plans to add functionality such as staking and yield generating functionalities. <laughs> what? What in the world is going on? The, what guys are you are you hearing this? The Ripple Liquidity Hub. Wow. Ripple Net GM Ashish Berla explained that we have been successfully using this same crypto sourcing technology to support Ripple's on-demand liquidity ODL product for nearly two years. Now, in response to customer demand. Ripple is making this proven resource available as a customer-facing product for 2022 and beyond. Well, that just happens to be just a few short weeks away. Interesting. We know full well the need for easy and efficient liquidity management. Crypto and financial institutions are embedded in our DNA, so it makes perfect sense that as they prepare for a crypto first world, our customers would want to access, would, would want access to the same trusted one-stop shop for buying, selling, and holding crypto assets that has powered our extensive work with financial institution, said Ashish Berla. The first announced partner for the alpha version of the product is CoinMe. <laughs> wow. The first licensed Bitcoin ATM company in the United States with thousands of locations across the country. Initially, CoinMe will utilize the underlying technology platform for liquidity of Liquidity Hub with plans to unlock additional functionality as it becomes available. Because I think we saw something about the CoinMe person being there at Ripple Swell. Did we not? Wow, where's the part where it says here about market makers? Here it is. Designed as a turnkey solution for financial institutions, 
Ripple Liquidity Hub will leverage smart order routing to source digital assets at optimized prices from market makers, exchanges, and OTC desks. Enterprises will use Ripple Liquidity Hub to easily and seamlessly provide their end customers with the ability to buy, sell, and hold digital assets at the best possible price across a range of venues, across a range of venues. Let me read this one part again. Ripple Liquidity Hub will uniquely solve for the specific pain points of enterprise customers, avoiding long and resource heavy integrations through a streamlined API. And unlike most other offerings, eliminating pre-funding requirements in order to free up working capital. Crypto first world, there it is. The Ripple Liquidity Hub is out. It's out of the box now, guys. <laughs> there it is. I love it. Ripple.com forward slash insights. That is some positive stuff to share. We'll get into Brian Brooks on it. We'll get into Brian Brooks in this um, interview with Tim uh, Mayopolis on another video. Boy, that is huge, huge news. Let me know, guys, if anyone has access to any of the Ripple Slow uh, um, uh, videos or stuff today, guys, let me know. DM me. Let me know in the comments. That would be really, really awesome. Definitely want to get some, some, some footage from the Ripple Swell event as well. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to end this video on this a great, exciting news. Like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this, that old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. <laughs> the digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye.